Hi guys, it is another hot, muggy summer day in March. Let's see, we were supposed to be, what is today? It is Tuesday, March 30th, 2021. We were supposed to head to a high of 85. It is now 89, feeling like 93 on this oppressive summer day and March, so uh, I am starting to think about packing it up and heading it north and thinking a lot about lost souls uh, roaming around uh, being doing what lost souls do with their life. But uh, before I get into that, uh, whether it be a whine or a rant, depending on whether I'm a lost soul or not. No, I, I, I just want to send out the message for anyone interested who lives somewhat on a trajectory between Tampa, Florida, and Ithaca, New York, that I'm going to be traveling through uh, your neck of the woods right about a month from now. Maybe I'll hitch a ride on one of these goddamn airboats. Uh, so I noticed, so I, I, I sent out five emails to people along the route, uh, letting them know that I'm heading through their neighborhood shortly yesterday, and I noticed four of the five people have made no response to my uh, <laughs> to my notification you know you guess it, so what do I do uh, do I assume do I read this as you know I told them uh, you know if, if I don't hear from you I will assume you're not interested in having me stop by and now four out of the five uh, friends of mine uh, have not responded but anyway uh, anybody out there living on a line between Tampa and Ithaca, send me an email to Humpty Dumpty Tribe at gmail.com and maybe we can get together. And this is kind of my segue. Uh, I wonder why the airboat just died. I absolutely love it when airboats break down. <clears throat> And we get some blessed silence out here. So, uh, I mentioned this guy a couple of days ago in a, in a rant. This fellow that's been staying here in, uh, in the hip camp, I will call him Gloomy George. You know, he... He came here to the hip camp, spent four nights here, he just left, uh, and, and told me the reason he came here was because, you know, it was solidarity with a, with, with a fellow anti-masker uh, is the reason he washed up here. So we'll call this man Lonesome George. And so I don't know how long Lonesome George has been on the road. He is uh, about my age. He was some sort of, uh, I didn't, you know, I, I don't like to pry in people's personal lives. He was some sort of computer geek that uh, retired recently, probably lost his job uh, out there in California. And... He, he's just so depressed, as he said, about just the, you know, this whole, all of these bullshit mask mandates and this corona panic and uh, all of this overreaction to, uh, he agrees with me solidly that this is a bad hair day. Uh, so that is the stated reason that he said what he is doing that since he's, so sick of uh, what's going on out in California, that was his stated reason for pretty much just 
uh, you know, packing up his uh, Subaru uh, w with a tent and a few clothes and whatnot and heading out on a great odyssey around the U.S. I don't know how long he's been on the road. Something tells me like six months this man has been... Uh, has just been going from uh, campground to campground and hip camp to hip camp, just living the life of a vagabond. And I, I, I don't know why this guy is just haunting me so much. He is just one of these, you know, you can, you meet people sometime and you just pretty much look at them. E even without speaking to them, and you know that they are just lost souls. That, uh, you know, you, you can tell that they don't have any friends on the planet. They probably never did have any friends. You, you, you can just look at people, just the, just the energy they uh they, they they just exude i uh, hate to use the word energy to describe this guy so uh it, it, it's just uh, i mean the vibe that i got from this man that that he's clearly does not know and, it, and it's not and it's bigger than the corona panic i that's certainly a good cover story, and I believe him when he says that uh, he cannot relate to anybody who wears a mask. That if you wear a mask and drink this Kool-Aid, uh, he wants nothing to do uh, with you. So that right there is probably just giving him the cover story that he needs. Uh, you know, in the in, in the few times we did speak, he was he mentioned uh, about just having this vague uh, fantasy of joining one of these communities. You know, one of these intentional communities that he's actually batted that around. But after you know thinking about. Uh, actually trying to, you know, join a group of like-minded individuals and whatnot. He just understands, uh, as I need to, that that is bullshit. That the, the, these intentional or unintentional communities that there's, you know, I've, I've had this rant before, that there is always someone, you know, where the buck stops. There is always some sort of benevolent dictator, and then you get into all of these pissing matches over personality conflicts, and, and although he didn't mention it, uh, you know, division of labor, and uh, he just said... You know, after toying around with that idea, he goes, you know, Sam, I just decided I'm, I'm, I would rather just be alone the rest of my life. That, and I mean, what a sad statement that he, uh, that he's basically just completely thrown in the towel and now he's just he's just riding around aimlessly. Uh, so he arrived here. He pitched his tent out in the yard. He did. He never got in his car in four days. Never left, and he he never made it literally in four days. While all of these other people. We're here, you know, canoeing and kayaking and going to baseball tournaments and up here, you know, up here in the the, the eagle's nest where I am, uh, having bonfires at night, you know, uh, getting together in the kitchen and, uh, and, and, and people just mixing and talking and hanging out together. 
this dude, he just stayed all by himself in the tent. I have, all right, they got it fired back up again. Uh, he is a uh, bitter enemy of airboats. I will say that the man does get it about airboats. This was his uh, main, I'm sitting up here butt-ass naked. I'm up here butt-ass naked while this airboat is driving around in front of me. Uh, and he would just sit in his tent. I, I, I'm talking, he would get up, I don't know what time he got up in the morning, apparently at the crack of dawn before anybody else woke up that he would creep over to the kitchen and and make and, and eat breakfast and I never saw him eat a meal other than that he just it, and it was hot as hell and he was in a nylon tent he wasn't even sitting outside of the tent I'm talking about he was lying inside at one of these little nylon dome tents. It's fucking 93 degrees and uh, and, and he literally spent, guys, he literally spent 23 hours a day for four days. This man, as far as I know, unless he was prowling around, uh, you know, between midnight and sunrise, maybe he was, uh, it, it, but if he wasn't doing that for four solid days, this man just lay there in, in this tent, and, and every couple of hours, he would go, uh, <coughs> and nobody else in the hip camp said a word. Just every couple of hours, we, we would hear, ah, coming out of the tent. And I guess he got into a brief conversation with, uh, <clears throat> with Billy Bob, you know, the, the one who was terrified of the... Uh, you know, about me not wearing a mask at the canoe thing. So I, I know we had a conversation with him. He told me, Lonesome George told me when he met Billy Bob that, you know, he stuck his hand out and Billy Bob just like put both of his hands up in the air like he was being held up at gunpoint and said, uh, I, I don't shake hands. So I'm a little unclear why Billy Bob shook hands with me when he met me and when he said goodbye. Uh, and as far as I know, in four days, he and I were in conversation. Absolute max, 15 minutes. Absolute max. Uh, in four days and nights, he and I spoke for 15 minutes, and probably he and Billy Bob spoke for less than five minutes. And, you know, the place was crawling with people. Uh, I mean, it was just all weekend long was full of people, and, and uh, he just hid right there in his tent and never came up here to look at this beautiful view, had no interest in it. Uh, <clears throat> and he packed up and uh, stuck his hand out and I shook his hand and uh, he said, thank you very much. Got in his car and drove off into the uh, gathering storm clouds and I, I, I don't know why this story uh, just depresses me so much. I mean he I mean it, 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 it's just it, it, it's just truly depressing that this guy 
uh, and, and it just begs the question of how many people, how many millions of uh, these lost souls are just roaming around uh, anyway, of course, uh, I am one of these lost souls roaming around. You know, I told him that uh, I spent 10 years living out of the back of my truck, and, you know, just, just roaming all around aimlessly, uh, that I did it for 10 years. I, I tried to uh, convince him to buy a little dog as a traveling companion and uh, he said it would just uh, you know cramp his style too much I mean he doesn't even have a dog uh, and I just wonder how many of these invisible people uh, are, are out there. I honestly don't think he's, quote, homeless. I think he's one of the voluntarily homeless. Maybe not. Maybe he was just embarrassed to admit to me that he's homeless. Uh, I don't know, guys, but it's... Uh, it was just pretty weird. And, uh, anyway, he got me depressed. Imagine that. But anyway, if somebody wants a depressed, collapsitarian, lost soul roaming around aimlessly to stop by their place here in the next month or so, uh, send me uh, an email at humptydumptytribe at gmail.com and, uh, the little dog and I will try to work you into my northbound schedule and uh, Crazy Crane, no, not Crazy Crane, Bugs in a Jar Hip Camp should be up and running by Memorial Day weekend. That is the goal is to have the Bugs in a Jar Hip Camp up and running by Memorial Day weekend. So come see me at Bugs in a Jar and maybe I won't be such a lost soul but uh, get out there and enjoy rambling around aimlessly through life while you still can. Bye, guys.